What is up guys, welcome to your fifth episode in Game Maker. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be in uh, some line of sight. So, to get started, we'll just name this sprite that we've just created as Sprite Player. And this is obviously just going to be our player. Um, we just want a nice black and white circle. So let's just create that. Right, that's our player. He's a bit fat, but you know whatever. Uh, that's our player, remember to send to the sprite. And another sprite that we haven't created before is going to be called a uh, sprite shadow. And this is going to be for our line of sight, the things that we can't see. So this is just going to be, for me, a 16 by 16 square. Just a black, black 16 by 16 square. The reason I say for me is because if your computer is more powerful than mine, which, which it probably is, you can create smaller circles which will create better quality. So you can do any multiples of six of sixteen sixteen. So maybe eight by eight, four by four, two by two if your computer is really powerful. Um mine's just gonna be sixteen by sixteen, because my computer isn't that great. So you don't want to center this right uh for what I'm gonna show you next. So we're gonna create an object and call it object control. We need to create a number of objects here. So one of them is called object control. One of them is obviously called object shadow. Assign the sprite as object shadow. Object control does not need a sprite because it's not going to be interactive in my, in our game. Create the room accidentally, obviously. Um, then create object solid. Uh, that doesn't need a sprite either. And then just create object wall. And object solid is going to be the parent to our wall. So they get to have specific attributes. Oh, is it easy? So we can have spe uh, specific attributes in the object wall. This needs a sprite, so just go on new, load sprite, and let's just look for that wall object that we've been using so frequently. Wall block, there we go. Uh, center the sprite, we can do that and just call it sprite wall. There we go. And now, for object control, in the create event, this is just going to be to create the entire shadows. So, what we haven't used before is the for statement. And this is how it goes. Use type for and open and close your brackets. And this is where our three things are going to be. So just put i equals zero. And then i is below room width. This checks whether i is below room width. And then i plus equals sprite get width we haven't used this one either this is just to get the width from a certain sprite that we created and the sprite that I'm going to use is obviously going to be sprite shadow so instead of just putting 16 which what which is what the width of sprite shadow is you can um, edit the sprite and it will automatically put the width in it so instead of putting 16 or 32 or 8 or something you can just leave it as that and then edit the sprite whenever you want so obviously, we have to put braces in, but now we need to put another for statement. And this is going to be fairly similar to the other one, but instead of i, we put ii equals zero. So the first for statement was for the x value for our, for our room, but the next one is going to be for the y value. That's why we named it ii. So now, if ii is below room height, remember, for the y value, and then ii plus equals what we did before, but instead it will be sprite get height. So obviously, as I said, instead of putting 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, or even 1, you just put it as this and then you can edit it sprite whenever you want. So sprite shadow. Obviously we need uh, a couple more braces. And all we need to put in here is instance create. Remember, these are the coordinates, x, y, object for the arguments that we put in. First argument is i for the x, and then comma double i for the y, and then just put uh, object shadow. There we go. And now that's going to create over the entire room how, however many objects ne needs to be there. So there we go. Now that we've done that, we don't need the sprite for that. In the shadow part, this is another thing we haven't used before. Just go any step event. 
So if distance oh that's another object we haven't created we haven't created the player I don't think. Object player. Nope. Is this is gonna be the distance where your player can see. So mine's going to be let's have a see. Um if it's below one nine two in fact let's put one two eight. Below one two eight then Alpha, remember with the capital letter that I put on that, that's important. Alpha equals distance to object. Object player divided by 1 to 8. This is fairly complicated, but I'll, I'll go in a step by step. Obviously, if distance to object, object player is below 128 pixels. So if it's closer than that, then the alpha variable equals distance to object, object player, which will be below 128, divided by 128. This gives it a value of below 1, which is what we want for the alpha value, because the alpha value can't be above 1. So in, this, in the create event, we will create the alpha value and just put it as 1. So in the draw event, we need to put some depth before we create the sprite. So depth equals 9999. That's a real low depth. That's important. And then just put draw sprite sprite. Um, what should we put? Yeah, sprite shadow. Yeah. And then sub image of zero. And then x and y for the coordinates. But this has no alpha value. We could just type draw set alpha as I'm doing here and then just put alpha there but oh, I've got plus there but um yeah we're not going to do that we're going to do a um, slightly more difficult way but you get, it gives you more variables so it's fine and then here we go no oh, draw sprite ext so now we have loads of more variables on the bottom of the screen so x scale, y scale, rotation color, and then most importantly, alpha. So we just want to put these in x scale and y scale are just the size of the sprite. You can edit them if you want if you want to know, but um, we're not. We're just going to leave it as one one. We don't want the object to rotate, so we just put leave that as zero. The color is minus one. You can change the color of it, so I could change the shadow to be white or something. But you can try that if you want. But I'm not going to. And then just put the most important. The most important thing is the alpha. That's what we've put there. See, there's the there's the alpha one there. And another thing we have to put for the step event is an else. Else alpha equals one. So if distance to object object player is below 128, you carry out this. But if it isn't, then alpha equals one. We spelled that. So now that's done. We need to create our wall. And the reason we put the depth in the shadow is because we want the object wall to be lower than the object shadow. And how we do that is you want draw and do the same as before, just depth equals nine 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 nine, but remember to add another nine. This is important. We don't need to put draw sprite ext for this because it's not going to be fading in and out unless you want it to. And then just put the uh, the sprite that we created, sprite wall, comma zero, because only got one sub image, and then the coordinates, and that's done there. So now, now that we've done all these, we need to create the actual player, and we have done this before. Just called object player, and assign our sprite. Remember, and the first thing that I'll put in is the collisions. So if there's a collision with object wall, as it says here, I'm just going to ex execute code and then just put uh, hate speed equals zero, p speed equals zero, and there we go. That's our collision. Now in the step event, this can be our movement. So we put, as we've done before, if keyboard check direct. 
odd a so this is for the a key let's just put and speed and h speed is let's say if it's above minus three then h speed minus equals 0.5 so if you're holding in the a key and h speed is above minus v because remember h speed going forwards is going right and h speed going backwards is going left so h speed minus equals 0.5 so then we are just copy and paste that and then change the a to a d and change this so it's h speed is below 3 so if you're holding the d key and h speed is below 3 h speed plus 0.5 so this, I'll just put a comment here just for you guys, and just put it as a horizontal speed. And I'll copy and paste this. I'm just going to change this to vertical. And this is to go up and down. So change this to W, and change this to S. So obviously, um, vertical speed, going down is actually a positive, and going up is a negative. So again, we want V speed to be above minus 3 and V speed to be below below 3 on this S uh, key. So we do V speed plus equals 0.5 and V speed minus equals 0.5. And just to make sure that we slow down, we just put friction equals 0.25. So this will make it that we don't need to put any of the like any other code like keyboard check released or anything we just put friction and then it's done so now what we want to do is just go back in, into object shadow and now we actually want to code um, if it's going to be on the wall if it isn't because we actually want to see our walls where um, where the shadow is so this just checks. In fact, I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll show you what's, what 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 we've got so far. So let's add our player and add control. That's what we've got so far. You know, which is all right. Yeah, it's a it's a torch or something, just going through the level. But what we want is walls so that we can't see everything in the room. And what we do with that is just go back and top to shadow. If you want to leave it as that, that's fine. That's been Ash the Phoenix. Well, well, goodbye. But um, if not, then um, we need to put an or statement. Or there's um. In fact, let's just see how I'm going to do this. If this into object is below one to eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. Else, put some more braces there, and then put another else. And put if collision line. We might have used collision line, but I'm not too sure. Um, the arguments in this are x and y. So from uh, from the object towards object player. So object player dot x comma object player dot y. And the object that we're looking for it to collide with is obviously object wall or in our case object solid because object wall has a parent of object solid precision we can just leave that um, so if there is a collision line then we just put alpha equals one and there is a I don't know what's up with this uh, unexpected symbol in expression okay um, let's just leave these out. There we go. So, if collision line, um, if there is a collision between these two coordinates, uh, x and y, and object player x and object player y between object solid, then alpha equals one. Else, through all of this, alpha equals one. So that we've done that. That was pretty simple, and I believe it's gone working. But I might have forgotten a step, which I normally always do. So let's just create some walls. Let's put some walls in here. <laughs> 